Whether it's been H.G. Wells' The Invisible Man, Harry Potter's Invisibility Cloak, or the cloaking device of Star Trek lore, people have always wanted to be able to move and communicate without detection. Being able to communicate securely is an extremely valuable asset to many businesses, such as banking, medical institutions, and high technology firms, as well as government organizations, especially the intelligence community and the military. Billions of dollars have been spent on developing hardware and software solutions to secure electronic communications. However, to date, the industry has only been able to stay one step ahead of adversaries and hackers. Each new technology has offered only incremental benefits and is increasingly more expensive to implement because it relies on making more and more complex encryption codes and keys overlaid on existing technology. It's like trying to hide a brick under a rug by adding more rugs. You might make it less obvious, but you will still be able to locate the brick by looking for its features that are different than those of the rug that covers it. DMS Cloakcom, on the other hand, pulverizes the brick, mixes it with dust, scatters it on the carpet, and still makes it possible for someone to shake the rug, get only the brick bits to come out, and reassemble the bits into the original brick. Cloakcom also makes it possible to do this with several bricks at a time, allowing several recipients to get their brick reassembled without any interference from the other bricks. Over the next few slides, we will discuss at a non-proprietary level, some of the details, theoretical underpinnings that make it work, and applications where this technology would solve a number of current communication problems and leverage existing hardware to provide a significant tactical advantage. Cloakcom was developed to respond to four major growing technical challenges. First, the increasing reliance on wireless technologies. The internet, despite its security challenges, is nearly everywhere and is increasingly wireless on more and more critical systems, posing a major vulnerability to personal, corporate, and national security networks, as recently demonstrated with the Colonial Pipeline shutdown, the hacking of local power grids, and the release of civilian and military personnel records. Wireless communications have become an integral part of the nation's infrastructure. Securing this infrastructure is becoming increasingly expensive to ignore. Second, the emergence of cloud computing. Edge computing, remote storage, and software as a service rely almost exclusively on server farms that house data remotely, that is, the cloud. Think Amazon Web Services and other providers, which are almost irresistible to hackers for the potential value of information and the real value, think cryptocurrencies, that can be stolen by unauthorized access. Third, the diminishing availability of wireless radio frequency channels. A major constraint to continued growth of the wireless connectivity is the availability of RF spectrum, most of which have been auctioned off by the FCC and the rest of the spectrum is held for military applications. This is a growing problem for the first responder community that tragically discovered this during the 9-11 attacks. That the concentration of their radios in a small geographic area led to multipath jamming and rendered wireless communications almost useless. The situation has not improved since that time. Recently, other disasters have experienced the same communication difficulties with their radios. Fourth, the evolving cybersecurity and cyber warfare threats. State actors or state-supported hacking consortiums have made ransomware a nearly daily occurrence with increasing sophistication, making it nearly impossible for commercial institutions, local governments, and even whole industry sectors to effectively respond to it. In almost all cases, the weak points are the wireless nodes on the network used by these organizations. So what then is Cloakcom? In its simplest terms, it is a signal encryption and spectrum management tool. There is a lot of meaning packed into those six words, and we will look at it piece by piece so that you can understand how different this approach really is. 
The first thing to clear up is that CloakCom is not a spread spectrum technology. CloakCom does not have repeating elements. That is, in statistical jargon, it is non-ergodic. In contrast, spread spectrum does repeat itself even if you spread the signal over a long period of time. This means that a repeating signal, that is one that is ergodic, can be observed over a long enough period of time so that the sample collected tells the observer what the properties of the whole signal are, which makes the communication both exploitable and jammable. Even if the signal is buried below noise, it can still be filtered with conventional electronic warfare measures because the signal features are discernible. So for the last 50 years, this has been a technological cat and mouse game between the signal generators and unintended receivers based on their computing power. Allow me to pose and answer some frequently asked questions about CloakCom. Suppose that you could have a signal without repeating elements. What would it look like? Well, there'd be no features. It would look like background noise. What frequency would you use? Well, it doesn't matter. The technology is frequency agnostic. How would you jam it? That would be almost impossible since there are no harmonics and you can't tell where it is on the spectrum. How does an intended recipient get it? They know the bandwidth and have a dynamic key. How do they get this key? They make it themselves, so it's never exchanged. How do they know they have the right one? Both the sender and receiver know the difference between the time they connected and some other point in time to create this key. The key can change every millisecond if needed. An unintended recipient never has both of these time elements, so even if they had the algorithm, they can never generate the right key. Does it work? Yes, it has been funded by and demonstrated to DARPA. It is backed by three US patents and trade secrets developed over 20 years of research. Is there anything else like it? Decidedly not. And we will show you that now. As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. This graphic represents the concepts just discussed, and they were modeled in MATLAB, so that you can see here on the upper left, a generated scent and on the upper right, received signals, as well as the quote unquote signal or rather lack of one, that is not observable by an outside receiver, which to them appears as background noise. These lack of signal features were later confirmed in demonstrations with proof of concept radios. Those screenshots will be shown on later slides. The main design principle of CloakCom is that ComSec, that is communication security, is not about increasing waveform complexity, but rather removing hackable features that can be exploited. You can't exploit what you can't find. In technical parlance, CloakCom is devoid of all timing elements and denies the outside observer any metadata needed to acquire and exploit a signal, which is why we refer to this featureless waveform as a metaform, since it has no repetitive elements and is frequency agnostic. The algorithms that create this metaform also provide the added benefit of being highly resistant to jamming and dramatically reduces and possibly eliminates the need for spectrum management. The DMS CloakCom metaform algorithm converts the signal into additive white Gaussian noise that exhibits the same properties as background noise so there are no patterns to recognize, even by emerging artificial intelligence and machine language technologies. The CloakCom metaform provides another equally attractive advantage. There are no exchanged keys. Nothing is ever exchanged, shared, or stored between the communicants. The algorithm generates its keys based on a single negotiated point 
in relative time. This relative time feature is quite unique in that communicants can set an arbitrary point in time as time zero. It can be in the past, at the point of a handshake, or well into the future. The algorithms will start dynamically generating internal keys based on the difference between the selected time zero and the initial handshake. Internal keys can be generated as short as every millisecond, and this rate can be varied even within a session if needed. This approach eliminates the need for highly accurate clocks so that one can use commercial grade oscillators. Communicants can even have significantly drifted clocks and still be able to communicate. Unlike other systems, there is no reliance on external timing, like GPS, which means that CloakCom can be used in signal denied areas. The CloakCom technology can also use a simple omnidirectional antenna, which can save a lot of space and weight in aviation applications. Finally, DMS CloakCom requires significantly less power since it generates very little overhead and does not have to overcome interference from other competing signals. This maximizes data transmission rates with minimum power requirements, which makes it suitable for passive sensor, satellite, and small UAV applications. Laboratory testing was performed to evaluate the signal characteristics. Figures one and two to the left and right of your screen respectively are spectrum analyzer screenshots of a 50 megahertz cloak comm transmission with a one megabyte per second pseudo random signal spreading and 10 megahertz RF signal dither. The primary signal lobe is the tabletop flat area in the center with the sidebands rolling off at either side. In either case, it can be seen that the amplitude variation of the main lobe is approximately three decibels, only with no visible cyclostationary artifacts or other unwanted signal identifiers. The small peaks visible to the left of the lower sideband in figure two on the right are spectrum analyzer markers and not products of CloakCom. Spectral artifacts that are commonly produced as a result of phase reversals in binary phase shift keying are not present in CloakCom due to the application of minimum impulse phase shift keying technology. Figure one on the left shows that the sidebands naturally roll off steeply to 30 decibels without the application of a bandpass filter. A steeper roll off to 55 decibels is achieved with the application of a bandpass filter, as seen in figure two on the right. For the purposes of testing and demonstration, the one watt proof of concept radios were set up with one in a static location and the other in a vehicle traveling random patterns within two to three miles of the stationary location at speeds of up to 35 miles per hour. Even with potential interference from a local TV station signal in the same frequency range and at a much higher power, communications were accomplished with a zero bit error rate. Here is an example comparison of a conventional secure RF waveform signature on the left overlaid against a Gaussian white noise background. The conventional waveform is easily detectable, see the red circle, even when transmitted just below the white noise level. Because it has cyclostationary, that is repeatable elements that intensify the signal in a narrow band. In other words, it has detectable features. By contrast, CloakCom, see the figure on the right, has a suppressed RF signature with no cyclostationary elements, that is, no discernible features and thus cannot be exploited. Consequently, the CloakCom metaform signal hides completely within the Gaussian white noise. The CloakCom algorithms were validated using MATLAB and then transitioned to a physical design 
for proof of concept testing. Four proof of concept CloakCom equipped communication units were built for testing. For each unit, CloakCom generation, detection, and demodulation algorithms for transmit and receive were embodied on a field programmable gate array mounted on a circuit board with a host computer and associated input output analog to digital and digital to analog electronics. RF boards, each with a one watt broadband transmitter receiver were operable in the VHF frequency band. All units were self-contained in small card cages for static or mobile use. CloakCom proof of concept units were designed and fabricated to operate at user selected frequencies from 20 to 60 megahertz, plus or minus some radio frequency dither. The HF frequency band was purposely selected for testing as compared to higher frequencies commonly employed in the UHF and microwave spectrum, so that a synthesized signal digital to analog and received signal analog to digital conversions could be directly employed so that all CloakCom processes and processing could take place at the base band. This approach precluded any requirement for the use of up and down converters or other third party circuit elements in either the transmit or receive signal chain, which could themselves insert undesirable, unrelated third-party spectral artifacts into the waveform. CloakCom could then be evaluated, tested, and demonstrated without any possible corruption or distortion. In summary, the big picture for the CloakCom Metaform technology is that it has demonstrated advanced spectrum management and signal encryption capabilities that are not available with other technologies. These capabilities translate into significant tactical advantages for commercial, first responder, and military applications, as noted on the left-hand side of this slide. And these improved capabilities can also be added to any existing platform in multiple formats, as noted on the right-hand side which thereby enhances existing capital investments with minimal additional cost. Should you wish to discuss this exciting technology further, you are welcome to contact us using the email, phone, or website information listed. For our military customers, please note that we are a prime on the RS3 contract so you can reach us through your contracting office. Thank you for taking your time to review this information, and we look forward to hearing from you soon.